It is with such great pleasure that I introduce our first speaker at the very first 3% conference. Um, Cindy Gallup's bio on the TED website, where she is a beloved regular, reads, Cindy Gallup has turned her illustrious advertising career into a lifelong pursuit of changing the world her way, one daring project after another. As founder and CEO of If We Ran the World, Cindy helps turn good intentions into action one micro action at a time. Another daring project of hers is Make Love Not Porn, an attempt to squash the myth of hardcore pornography and to begin a dialogue around how real people have sex. Cindy's background is in advertising. She started up the US office of ad agency Bartle Bogle Hegarty, I hope I pronounced it right, in New York in 1998, and in 2003 was named Advertising Woman of the Year. Ad Age listed Cindy as one of their top 100 women in advertising just out this week, which is in your gift bags. Um, so let's welcome the beginning of the 3% conference, the beginning of an international dialogue with a voice famous for demanding that we do better. Please welcome Cindy Gallup. Thank you, Kat. Welcome, Deb. I began my advertising career in London in 1985 um, at an agency called Ted Bates, back in the days when that agency still existed. Um, I went on from Ted Bates to work at JWT in London, and then in 1987, I got a call from an advertising agency called Gold Greenlee's Trot, GGT. GGT was one of the hottest agencies in London at the time. It had been set up by three guys, Mike Gold, the media person, Mike Greenlee's, the account guy, and Dave Trot, the creative director. And GGT um, was doing great work born of an extremely macho culture that it was very proud of. As managing director Jim Kelly, um, who went on to be the Kelly in Rainey Kelly Campbell Rolfe and later Rainey Kelly YNR, said, at GGT, we like to stab you in the front. <laughs> Dave Trott ran the GGT creative department like a war zone. Creatives were encouraged to steal briefs off each other's desks, compete to see who could do the best work. They were encouraged not to be friends, but to be enemies. And at some point in 1987, for whatever reason, GGT looked at itself and went, oh my God, we're all guys. We need some women. Let's hire some women. So um, they instantly hired three account managers. Myself, Julia Regan, who now works as a headhunter in New York, and Kate Bristow, who is now the um, planning director at MNC Saatchi LA. And we came into this extremely macho environment where, I should say, um, we loved the dedication to creativity, but it was a very, very tough culture. Every morning, um, there was a Hill Street Blues type roll call where Dave Trott and the traffic managers sat around a big table and every account person lined up to talk about the state of their individual piece of business. And this meeting was so unnerving that Julia would regularly take Valium before we went in. Um, and in fact, she, um, she, it was this experience that led her to leave and become a headhunter in pretty short order. Um, Kate and I stayed. Um, we loved it. Um, we shared an office, which became known as the Sin Bin. And um, Dave Trott, one day, um, having a conversation with me, said, nah, Sin, he had, had an East End accent I can't re re reproduce. He said, um, nah, you know, um, you and Kate, you're good. The way I see it is, you're honorary men. And I remember thinking, even at the time, that's not really what it's about, Dave. Um, when I watch Mad Men, I am entertained by how much has changed in our industry and how much hasn't. Women form the majority of purchasers or the majority of influencers of purchase in virtually every product category on the planet. Women are the majority of users of social media. Women are the majority of gamers, both video and online. Um, incidentally, the highest growing sector in video gaming is young women 18 to 24. Women are the majority of people who express themselves online as digital personas. And yet, the majority of people creating communications and advertising to these women are male. The majority of people evaluating and deciding 
the creativity, the effectiveness, and the gold standard of these communications are male, as anyone who has ever played Hunt the Woman in Any Can jury photo can tell you. And the majority of people leading, managing, and directing every single agency and business in our industry are male. We're all here because we want to see that change. And, and we want to see that change not just because we are a bunch of feminist harridans banging on about how unfair life is, <laughs> but because it is a strategic imperative for our industry that it has to change. And the reason I say that is, think about the millions of advertising messages that we are collectively responsible for every day and receive ourselves every single day. And then think about those messages within them that particularly are the ones that go something like this. You can download this for free if you just agree to watch these ads. You can make these calls free from your phone if you just agree to receive these ads to it. Skip this ad, subtext, you know you want to. And my personal favorite, the pre-video um, pre-roll announcement. Only 13 more seconds, only 12 more seconds, only 11 more seconds. We know you're suffering. We know it's horrible. It's agony. Hang on in there. It'll be over soon. Only seven more seconds. <laughs> what all of those messages are driven by and what all of them communicate is that advertising is a very bad thing. They communicate that advertising is a very bad thing and therefore people have to be begged, persuaded, bribed, blackmailed, tricked, cajoled, and deceived into watching it. Years ago, um, I heard Mark Goldstein speak at a Forays management conference back when he was the CMO of Fallon. And he said this great thing. He said, people hate advertising in general, but they love advertising in particular. And what he meant by that was, if you ask the man or woman in the street, so, what do you think of advertising? They'll go, oh, I bloody hate it. Gets in the way of all my favorite shows, it's everywhere I go. But if you ask them, what's your favorite ad? They'll go, oh, I really love that Nike ad where people hate advertising in general, but they love advertising in particular. Our industry has to make people love advertising in general. We have to move from a focus on making good advertising to a focus on making advertising good. We have to make people believe that our industry and what we do can be a force for good if we want to have a future. You're going to hear today from many brilliant people, female and male, talking about all the ways in which we intend to change the future of our business. I want to focus in on two particular areas. I want to talk to you about how we can and must do that in the area of creativity, and I want to talk about how we can and must do that in the area of designing our business. Earlier this year in June, um, I gave a seminar at, at Can Lions. Um, I gave a seminar on porn, youth, and brands, the biggest socio-cultural influence on young people today that we don't talk about. I love going to Can because I love topless sunbathing. When you live in the US, the only places you can sunbathe topless are on private property or at the pool at Caesars Palace that has a big sign that says European style sunbathing. <laughs> so I arrived at Cannes um, the Saturday before the festival started. I dumped my luggage in my rental apartment. I put on my bikini. I raced down to the public beach and I whipped my top off. And then I looked around and I was the only woman on the beach with her tits out. Now, I didn't let that stop me for a moment, but when I got back to my apartment, I tweeted and I said, France, what's going on? <laughs> the last time I'd been in Cannes was five years earlier and there were naked breasts galore all over the beach. And one of my Twitter followers tweeted back at me a link to an article which talked about a survey that had been done in France um, since 2009, which identified the fact that Older French women, my generation, are extremely comfortable and happy sunbathing topless as they always have in France, but younger French women don't want to take their tops off sunbathing. And 
younger French women don't want to sunbathe topless because they have body issues. I know where that comes from. That comes from porn. That comes from popular culture. That comes from media. And that comes from us. How many of you in this audience are familiar with the concept of the male gaze? Quite a few of you. Um, the male gaze um, well, is a concept that was identified and given that term back in the mid-70s by an art historian who realized that um, as art has been created down the ages, predominantly by male artists, um, women are always reflected back to the viewer of art through the male gaze through the male lens, so that we look at ourselves represented in art as a man sees us and as a man plays us back to ourselves. Our industry has been playing everything back to women through the male gaze. The new creativity is about the female gaze. The old creativity in our business is male-informed. In a world where only 3% of creative directors in the US are female, creativity in the advertising industry is defined as what appeals to men to the extent that most creatives actually believe you cannot do great effective advertising if women are your target audience. I remember one of my executive creative directors at BBH New York, who shall be nameless, but they were all male, um, who said to me that he wanted us only to target and go after business brands and accounts whose target audience was young men age 24, because those were the only people that we could do great advertising for, because those were the only people um, for who, whom advertising targeted them would actually win awards. I sit on um, one of the creative review committee, committees at the Advertising Council, our job at the Ad Council is to help them review um, the public service campaigns that agencies, client sponsors, and non-profits and um, NGOs do, um, and to help make the work as great as possible. So we review it at strategy stage, creative concept stage, and rough cuts and finish work stage. And as anybody who works at the Ad Council will tell you, I am the person in the room who um, as I did a few weeks ago, talking to a very large agency where the team presenting the creative work to us was all male, said at the end of the meeting, and when you make those revisions to the TV commercials, the scripts you've just presented that we've asked for, please can you also flip the genders? Can you put the boy in the kitchen with mom and can you put the girl on the soccer field with dad? because our industry perpetuates stereotypes unthinkingly. The new creativity is not about stereotypes. The new creativity is about real. The new creativity is female-informed. And that actually represents huge opportunities for new and different and refreshing creative work in our industry. Work born out of real empathy, Real relevance, real originality. Not the same old tired jokes and classic male stereotype scenarios that we see in every single Super Bowl, in every single Super Bowl commercial break that runs. <laughs> also at the Ad Council, um, an all-male creative team presented um, a series of um, TV commercial vignettes um, for a cause where the people who most influence what happens are women. And every single one of the six or so TV scripts that was presented was a male-orientated scenario showing truck drivers, etc. And every single person featured in them was male. And I asked that question. I said, why? In six TV commercials, every single one is a male scenario, every single one features a man. Deathly silence from the all-male creative team lineup. They hadn't even thought about it. This is unconscious. It's become the norm. At a time when our industry desperately needs fresh thinking, um, new creative perspectives, the new creativity has to be female-informed because that is what will deliver them. 
Um, th this area is one that I could talk about at great length, and I won't, but I will just say also that um, the future, too, in our industry is about making stuff. The future is not about advertising units, it's about advertising products. It's about creating things of utility and value that can play a role in our consumers' lives. And women understand how to create things of utility and value for women in a way that can also transform what we see as creativity in our business. And interestingly, you know, my venture that Kat referenced, Make Love Not Porn, you know, porn is absolutely an area where everything is played through the male gaze. And with Make Love Not Porn, um, our tagline is pro-sex, pro-porn, pro-knowing the difference. We are not porn, we are not amateur, we are real-world sex. We are presenting something completely different, and we are presenting human sexuality through the female gaze. And makelovenotporn.tv, which is the platform that I and my team built to do that, is only six weeks old in private beta, but we already have over 72,000 people signed up on our beta waiting list, and people are responding to something played out through the female gaze instead. The, the other area I want to talk about is the design of our business. Business generally is a male construct. And that's not surprising because for centuries we were not allowed to do it. So business has grown up around male business values and the male leadership model, command and control. The future of business is about feminine business values. It's about a female leadership model of collaboration, of consensus building, of community. When I launched my venture, If We Ran the World, I said to my team, I want us to innovate in every aspect of how we design and operate this as a business venture as much as the actual web platform itself. Because I want us to design our own business around the working lives that we would like to lead. So I said to my um, tech guy, Jason, I want us to design this web platform so we can operate it on a very lean core infrastructure so that if, as we hope, one day, fingers crossed, it grows and scales, we don't have to grow and scale with it. I no longer want to run that kind of a company. And the reason I said that is because for years, as an advertising agency CEO, I ran the kind of agency, the kind of company where as you grew and you won more business, more clients, you had to hire more people, you had to expand into bigger premises, you had to acquire more resources. The moment there was an economic downturn, you were screwed. I never, ever want to be in that position again. And I'm, and I'm designing my own startup businesses so I'll never have to be. I demand extraordinary talent. I will only work with extraordinary talent. And so I hire extraordinary talent wherever I find it. The rest of my team is not based in New York where I am. We have one person in Seattle, one person in Portland, one person in Montreal. We remote work. The Skype video call has transformed my business life and it's free. We come together for keynotes of the process. But what that means is we don't need offices. We don't need to carry those overheads and those costs. We work out of my apartment, their apartments, out of coffee shops, hotel lobbies. We're a very future-forward business. And my co-founder, Uni Chase, who is phenomenal, her background is digital advertising. So she knew what I meant when I said to her, our business model, if around the world, is built around brands. We're going to work with brands as clients. I want us to design our brand and business user interface and experience so that we design out the shit and we design in the good stuff. Because I spent years as an advertising agency CEO dealing with shit, dealing with fraught client relationships, argy barges across the conference room's table, you know, hideous meetings. Now it's my own business. I never want to do that again. So let's design it out of the process. Now, this is a work in progress. But if it more about putting as much care and attention into designing the client business user interface and experience as they do the consumer interface and user experience, 
we'd all be living much happier lives, clients included. I designed my business model with If Around the World to be universal, democratic, transparent, eminently affordable, and very, very simple. And I did that for three reasons. Years ago, in the Harvard Business Review, I read a quote. Somebody said, the single most destabilizing dynamic in any organization is a sense of unfairness. And they're right. So I designed our business model to work on the same principles for everybody. The absolute amounts that clients pay us differ based on the amount of work we do for them, but the principles are the same, universal. I designed it to be transparent because several years ago when I was concepting this, um, this doesn't happen so much anymore, but people said to me, oh my God, Cindy, you want to start a business that does good and makes money? You can't do that. People get angry. You've got to be a non-profit. And I went, screw that. I want to make money. But okay, I'm going to design my business model to be transparent so at any time I can go, look, here's how we make money, nothing to hide. And I designed it to be radically simple because I never wanted to have to worry my pretty little head about it. Again, as an advertising agency CEO, I spent years dealing with the nightmare of financial operations. Every year, negotiating every client compensation agreement all over again from scratch, often with different clients. You know, endless, hideous financial meetings. So I went, OK, it's my business. I'm going to design a business model that is so simple, I can carry it my head at all times. I don't even need to open an Excel spreadsheet to know how much, how much I'm making. And I'm telling you that because we need to redesign the way we do business, and we need to redesign the way we make money. And we can do both. Too many people think that there is a set of business models out there and you have to pick one of those. Too many people think, this is our industry business model, there is no other. That's not true. And I've just told you what I do in my businesses, because when I talk about Make Love Not Porn, or when I talk about If We Ran The World, one of the points I always make to the audience is, if you take away one thing from this, if you find my ventures interesting, disruptive, innovative, take this away. This is a venture concepted by a woman, founded by a woman, designed by a woman, and built by a tech team that is more female than male. Women think differently. Women create differently, and women design business models differently. People said to me about makelovenotporn.tv, nobody pays for porn. I went, they're going to pay for what I'm going to give them. I designed a very innovative revenue-sharing business model for makelovenotporn.tv, and again, at six weeks old, in private beta, we have already taken in thousands of dollars in income, and people are paying for real-world sex. So here's what I want this audience to do. Here's what I want the industry to do, but here's what I want this audience to take on board and spread to the rest of the industry. Men in the audience. How many men are there in the audience, by the way? It's quite hard to see. Hands up, men. Okay, not enough. But well done, you. <laughs> Sexism is unconscious. It's unconscious in a world where the default setting is always male. And so what I really want to exhort the men in our industry to do is to think about this. It's very comfortable working with people like you. It's very comfortable hiring people like you. It's very comfortable championing people like you, promoting people like you. It's very comfortable hanging out with people like you. I believe that's a key reason why so many creative departments are predominantly male. If you want to work with women, men, if you genuinely want a gender equal industry, you have to be prepared for discomfort. Because it is uncomfortable to work with women because we're different from you. Women ask the tough questions. They ask them in life and they ask them in business. And those tough questions range from, what are you thinking? <laughs> Where is this relationship going? <laughs> to, why are we spending money on this in our business? Why, when this person is in meetings, does everybody else go quiet? Why does this team not seem very happy? 
Those are the questions women ask. When you have a closed loop of guys talking to guys about other guys, you never get the discomfort that makes great things happen. Greatness comes out of discomfort. And so, men, I want to exhort you to actively embrace discomfort and feeling uncomfortable. Hire women, champion women, promote women, spend time with women. It's not as comfortable as hanging out with the guys, but it's going to be more productive. And women, what I want you to do is to speak up. A number of you may have read um, the short piece I wrote in Ad Age this week about the fact that several years ago, um, a survey was conducted on women in the workplace that identified, unsurprisingly, that women who operate as we naturally would to feminine business values, feminine principles approach in the workplace are seen as weak, pathetic, and ineffectual. Women who play, play it the way the men do, play by the men's rules, are seen as domineering, aggressive bitches. The survey itself was titled, Damned If You Do, Doomed If You Don't. And the New York Times piece that covered this survey several years ago said, and I quote, women can't win. And we can't. So in that scenario, what I always recommend to women is be the bitch. I don't mean that literally. There is no excuse for aggressive, unpleasant behavior in the workplace for either gender. And by the way, we see too much of it in certain quarters of the industry for men. But if you are faced with that choice, be seen as the bitch. Because bitches got to start bitching. Bitches have to speak up. Do you have a different point of view from the men? Say so. Do you see an all-male environment in your agency? Call it out and do something about it. Do you see a decision being made that is not women's advantage? Call that out. Speak up. The only people who can make things happen for us is us at the end of the day. And so I want to ask everybody in this audience to actively challenge the things you may never have thought of challenging before, no matter how uncomfortable for you that may be. Be your own filter. If you challenge it and it's a problem, do you really want to work there? Do you want to work with people who don't understand that the best future for our industry is the one that men and women build equally together? My favorite quote of all time is um, Alan, uh, from Alan Kay, who's one of the fathers of computer science, who said, um, in order to break the future, you have to invent it. I am all about inventing the future. Too many people believe the future is something that happens without us and rolls us over in its wake. I'm all about decide what you want the future to be and make it happen. Every single one of you in this room has the opportunity to decide what you want the future of our industry to be. Because I can promise you nobody else is. Seize that opportunity. Decide the industry that you would like to work in and make it happen. Because Clay Shirky put it very well, the internet guru, when he said, institutions have a vested interest in perpetuating the problems to which they are the solution. That's the stranglehold our old world order industry is in at the moment with its old world order systems, processes, structures, and its old world order business model. We're here today because Kat Gordon decided to do something that no other institution in our industry has done. Even the ones that are meant to be the guardians and champions and challengers of creativity. <coughs> Nobody of the one show, the Creative Circle, the Clios, DNAD, the Art Directors Club, nobody has ever challenged the lack of women in creative departments in our industry before. We've been talking about it for years. It's a discussion topic at conferences. Women talk about it all the time. But nobody has ever done anything about it. Kat Gordon is doing something about it because she is challenging the status quo because that is what women do. We challenge the status quo because we are never it. Our, our 
our industry badly needs to challenge its own status quo. And men, the men who lead holding companies, the men who lead advertising agencies, the men who lead client companies, the status quo ain't working. If you want to change it for a better future, then bring women in to help you do that. Because women and men shoulder to shoulder can change the future industry to be a future that is about making people think completely differently about what we do and why we do it. Together we can change the future of our industry to be about amazing creativity that is a force for good, about building brands to be great once again in completely different ways, and last but absolutely not least, a future that is about making a shed load of money, which we absolutely need to get back to. <laughs> so it's a wonderful thing that Kat has done to bring us all here today. Don't let it go to waste. All too often, when you leave a conference, you go back to your desks, you get sucked back very, very quickly into the old way of doing things. You cannot do new world order advertising from an old world order place. I regularly say to audiences at conferences, it doesn't matter how brilliant you think I am. It doesn't matter how inspirational you think anything I say is or anything anybody else says today is. It doesn't matter what great, innovative, disruptive ideas we're all giving you. If you take all of that brilliance, all of that inspiration, all of that innovation disruption, go back to the office and plug it back into the same old world order, systems, processes, structures, and mindset, you get the same old world order crap out the other end. Don't waste this conference. Take everything you're going to hear today back to the agency, back to the office, back to business, back to life, and do something about it. Rock the fucking ad industry. We want to see it happen. Thank you.